Today is February the 16th, 2022. It is a Wednesday, and the title of this devotional is Every Generation Must Decide Whom They Serve. Now, the scripture reading, 2 Kings chapter 18 and 2 Chronicles chapter 29. Now, these are parallel passages of the reign of Hezekiah, the king of Judah. 2 Kings 18 records the rise of the 25-year-old Hezekiah to the throne of Judah, where he would reign for 29 years. Now, we read in 2 Kings 18 and verse 3 that Hezekiah set his heart to do that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Now, 2 Kings chapter 18, verses 4 through 6, introduces a series of reforms that addressed the sins of Judah's past. Now, for a moment, we're going to move to 2 Chronicles 29. Again, it is a parallel of the reign of Hezekiah. But in 2 Chronicles 29, we do have now an unfolding of the first year of Hezekiah's reign. Now, though he was a young man, he did set his heart to serve the Lord and to lead God's people back to the Lord. Now, we find in verse 3 through 11, his first challenge was to repair the temple. And sadly, under his father, King Ahaz, the temple had been closed, they had been neglected. And so the first thing that Hezekiah did was to summon the priests and the Levites, and he commanded them, cleanse yourselves, and then cleanse the temple. Now, speaking as the leader of the nation, the king identified the failures of the previous generation and how they had neglected their spiritual roles in the temple, and it neglected the temple itself. And Hezekiah made the observation that all the troubles that had befallen Israel had resulted as the wrath of the Lord was upon Judah and Jerusalem. Now, Hezekiah, in verse 10, set an example of humility and sincerity, revealed his resolve to renew the covenant with the Lord and to pray that God would turn away his fierce wrath from the nation. Now, he spoke to the Levites and the priests as a loving king, and he challenged them, my sons, now, be not now negligent, for the Lord hath chosen you, to stand before him, to serve him, that you should minister unto him and burn incense. In other words, Hezekiah reminded the priests and the Levites that their calling was from God. Now, Second Chronicles again, verse uh, chapter 29, verses 12 through 36. Now, here we have uh, the call to revival, and we follow the steps that Hezekiah took. The first of one, he summoned those who would be leaders of the three clans of the Levites. Now, I'm not going to go into that. You can find that in your reading, verses 13 through 14. Then he summoned the musical families also that would lead in the worship in the temple. And then we come to verses 15 through 16, where the Levites and the priests then began cleaning the temple and its grounds, the priests hauling out of the interior of the temple those things that they deemed unclean, and they were taken to a valley, Kidron, the brook of Kidron, where they were most likely burned. Now, the cleaning of the temple grounds belonged to the Levites. All of this was done in 16 days. After the 16 days, they went to the king who, and told him all that had been accomplished. Hezekiah, in verse 20, immediately summoned all the leaders of Jerusalem, and we read in verse 20, they went up to the house of the Lord. Now we have there in verses 21 through 24 where Hezekiah and the leaders dedicated the temple. They sacrificed animals as offerings, placing their hands on those that would be sacrificed and identifying with their deaths the penalty of their own sins. Now, verses 25 through 26 of Second Chronicles 29, the musicians were taking their place, and as the offerings were, were given, the musical instruments were playing. And finally, we read in verse 28 that all of the congregation worshiped, and the singers sang, and the trumpeters sounded. What a glorious day it was in verse 30, as the Psalms of the Lord written by David and Asaph, his, his musician, were once again heard 
in the temple. Now, the congregation of Judah was then invited to bring their individual offerings to the Lord. So much was given and offered to the Lord that the Levites had to assist the priest in the giving. Why was so much giving given? Verse 31, for they gave with a free heart. Now, the rededication of the temple, the restoration of the worship and offerings were accomplished all in Hezekiah's first year. Now, just a reminder, he would reign 29 years. Well, soon, actually within the sixth year of Hezekiah's reign, we turn back to 2 Kings 18 now, and we find the fall of Israel. The captivity as Assyria conquered those ten tribes to the north. And it brought great pressure now, a crisis of faith for Hezekiah and for Judah. In 2 Kings 18 and verses 9 through 12, we began reading that the Assyrians laid siege to Jerusalem. Well, for a season, uh, we have Hezekiah bought a time. He negotiated a, a tribute, a tax with Assyria uh, if they would leave him and the people of Judah free. And so he emptied the treasuries of the palace and the treasuries of the temple. And we read even in verse 16, he began stripping the gold from the doors of the temple and from the, the pillars within inside the temple. And yet none of this was enough for the king of Assyria. Adding to the humiliation, the king of Assyria then sent a great army, and they demanded that Hezekiah surrender the capital city to their king, hoping to discourage the soldiers. Day after day, the Assyrians stood outside the walls of Jerusalem. They mocked the God of Israel. They scorned Hezekiah and his soldiers. And yet we read in 2 Kings 18 and verse 36 that the soldiers wisely did not answer with a word the threats of the Assyrians. Well, Hezekiah received news of the taunts of the Assyrian delegation, and we read that he, in verse 19, uh, chapter 19 and verse 1, that he humbled himself, and he rent his clothes, and he covered himself with sackcloth, and he went into the house of the Lord. I have a closing thought for you. Hezekiah led Judah back to the Lord, and he purged the nation of its idolatry. He was a godly king, unlike any other we read in 2 Kings 18 and 5 and 6. And yet, sadly, the spiritual revival would die with the king. Therein is the lesson that every generation will decide whom they will serve. And tragically, the bent of the heart of man is to do evil. And without a revival, a nation invites God's judgment. You and I might not be able to change the course of our country, but certainly we can individually, as families and as a church, humble ourselves before the Lord, pray, seek Him, and obey Him. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today, and bye-bye.